So <clears throat> in this video, I will be teaching how to use lists and a few functions on lists. So what is a list, you might ask? Well, a list is basically just something that you use to uh, write down a bunch of information that you might forget. So you might have a shopping list in real life that contains maybe 40 or 50 food ingredients, uh, three or four items of clothing, and a few other bits of bats. You know, if you've got the money for that much stuff, you might have a list of uh, friends in your phone, you know, a friend contact list. Uh, there are all kinds of lists. But these lists are essentially used so that we can to help us remember and manage large amounts of information. For example, you may have 400, 500 friends in your life. You might only have 50, but it's still hard to remember every single one of those items. It's hard for us to keep track of many, uh, many things at once. So this a list is really a way to keep track of many items and manage them without having to remember them all individually and these kind of lists can be implemented in python excuse me so i'll start by entering a shopping list and i'll show you how to construct one this shopping list will just contain strings for now so we start you know in the same way that we make any variable by declaring with the equal sign what the value will be and then we add these two square brackets here i don't know what the real name for them is i know name for the curly brackets is parenthesis but i just call them square brackets so you know if someone wants to find out the technical professional name for it they're all welcome but yeah we've got to do one opening square bracket and one closing square bracket there's our opening and there's our closing okay inside the square bracket we put whatever value you want so let's put i don't know i want to buy some apples yep and then after that value we put a comma and then we put the next value so let's say i want to buy apples and i want to buy mangoes i'm not sure if that's the right way to spell mangoes plurally it's probably it's probably os i'm not sure whatever it doesn't really matter um i also want to buy a play station and some trout okay and this is it this is my entire list created that's as simple as it is to create a list now i'm going to print the list to confirm that it's worked and show you what it looks like to print out the list and really the printout won't look much different to the list that we've constructed there there we are there's our list with all the four values inside of it and as i say a list can contain several different types data types inside of it at once so it doesn't have to have all of one data type i'll demonstrate that here by making this list of just uh, a few numbers and then i'll make a list that contains numbers uh, strings and also booleans so here's number list print number list and then we'll have a mixed list and this will contain all kinds of different data types we'll put a few numbers in it we'll uh put some boolean values in it if you really want and we'll put one or two names in it shall we arthur um la rosa la rosa eso es and maybe i don't know uh machine we'll just put the string machine in why not why not put the string machine in there we don't need it but why not put it in there and by printing this and by confirming that this variable can be created i'm essentially showing you that a list contain can contain more than one data type so this list contains integers, booleans, and strings. I could also put floats, whatever data type. The list does not have to just exclusively contain strings, exclusively contain integers, or exclusively contain booleans. It can contain many data types. Okay. I think the point there has been made. Now, 
Let's say I want to look at a specific item in the list. Maybe I want to look at the first item or the second item or the third item of the list here. There is a way to do that, but there's one thing we have to understand about lists and arrays in Python, and that is that they actually do not start at 1, they start at 0. So apples is of index 0, mangoes is of index 1, not of index 2, no idea why I type that. PlayStation is index 2, and trout is of index 3. So there we go, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Yep. Even though trout is the fourth item, it is index number three of the shopping list. Yep. And I'll do the same for number list, just to kind of show you again. So three is the index number zero, four is at index number one, five is at index number two, six is at index number three, one is at index number four, and two is at index number five. To prove this, I will now try and get the value of one of these indexes. So the way to do this is to get the name of the list, so shopping list in this case, and then in square brackets, put square brackets next to the list name, or the variable name of the list, should I say. And let's say I want to get list index number one, I put number one in these square brackets, and this should print out the word mangoes. Because even though mangoes is the second item in the list, it is at position index number one. It is index number one of the list. Because the list index does not start at one. And array indexes in Python do not start at one. They start at zero. Therefore, the first item is zero. The second item is one. The third item is two. And so on and so forth. We'll prove this again by printing out number list and item number array number sorry three which should come up with item number four which should be six okay and there we have it this is not the only way to um, get items in an array or in a list should I say specific items you can also actually get the last item in the list and items from the back of the list by putting in this in these square brackets minus one so this minus one gets the first bracket from the the first indexed item from the back of the list a minus two would get playstation so this should return trout and this next one which i'll give the index number of minus two should return playstation The negative numbers go backwards, so this will be minus 1, that will be minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4 here. So if we go beyond minus 4, nothing will come out. It should really come up with an error, but we'll see. We'll see what actually happens. So that's produced an error because the list index is out of range, as in it's not within the list. Okay. The other thing I can do is if I get the fourth in index number four which doesn't exist we could also have the list index out of range yep so that is showing us out of range once again see that each time i click it out of range so you cannot ask for items uh, or index numbers that are not within the list whether that be positive index numbers or negative index numbers by taking from the back the next thing we can do is actually get a specific range of items from a list. So let's say I want to get every item in the number list uh, from index 2 and above. Okay, So 2 and above would give me 5, uh, 6, 1 and 2. So it would give me the indexes 2, 3, 4 and 5. So it would give me all of these values. What this is saying is that we want the index number 2 up until the index number infinity. And infinity being the last item in the list. So we get 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then because the list terminates at 5, that is considered as this list's infinity. The next 
way of showing you this is as well I can get items in number list from two to four okay now you might be thinking that should print out five six and one but it actually only prints five and six the reason this is is because it prints the first item which is of index two and then the next item but it prints the items up to four so it doesn't print index four it prints all the items from two including two up to four but not including four so it's exclusive as for this second number but inclusive of this third number so for example if i print number list two to five it should print out five six and one but not print out index number five which would be two in the list so print number list two to five and it should print out the values five six one and two because they are index numbers two three and four and it terminates at index number five but does not print index number five okay another thing we can do if we want to change an item in a list just one item is we can actually for example let's say my shopping list i uh, i've decided i don't want mangoes but i do want something else i've decided i want peaches okay well i can actually get shopping list index one and make it equal to peaches if i wish peaches just like that and then if i print the shopping list you'll see that it's been changed and now we have peaches instead of mangoes yeah i can do this for whatever item i want within the list so i could turn trout into salmon for example and if we print this out i should end up with a shopping list with apples peaches playstation and salmon and there we are now i'm going to make a new list in order to demonstrate a function that exists uh, within lists and i'm going to call it uh, color color i'll call it color equals da -da -da. and we'll just have a few colors we'll say blue uh, we'll say red and we'll say yellow yeah just just a few colors to get us off now there's a method or sorry there's a function called extend which actually changes the list dot extend by adding a list to that list so if i use extend on this color list and i extend with the shopping list essentially what will happen is the shopping list all the items in the shopping list rather will be added to the color list now this isn't a return value it gives you this actually permanently changes the original list so if you don't want the original list to be changed i I suggest that you copy the original list however I'll show you how to do that later for now I just want to demonstrate how this works so we've read in that value there I'll just get the print statement ready for when the, the list is done and we'll extend color dot extend shopping list so shopping list should contain blue red and yellow and then the current values within uh, the shopping list apples pizzas playstation and salmon so let's there we go so we've used the extend uh, function and there you go blue red yellow apples peaches playstation and salmon remember that we changed the uh, the contents of the shopping list so it's no longer apples mangoes playstation and trout so the shopping list you know index one is peaches index three is salmon instead of trout so this is correct even though comparing it to that it doesn't look it okay next let's say we just want to add one item to our list so let's say we want to add the color purple to our list 
Well, we can use dot append. Look at that, it just came up without me even asking. So we can use the color purple. And now this list should contain all the previous, but also the color purple. Oops. It won't contain, it'll contain, because I've just used extend on it, it'll actually contain purple and then a repeat of Sam and Peach. Yeah, you see that? So I did add purple, but what I did there, I accidentally, I accidentally used this uh, extend. So this is the first list with the already extended, <laughs> extended uh, shopping list. I then added purple via appending purple to the list, but then I accidentally extended the list and added apples, peaches, PlayStation, and salmon. So as you can see, if you don't want those values, it might be worth copying this list before you extend the list and extending the copy. Yeah, that's pretty much my point proven there. Anyways, I'll append, I'll append purple again, so that you can see that purple is on the end of this new list that I got from the extending of shopping list. And there we go, we got purple twice now. So that's just to prove that it does work. We can also insert an item into the list. So you might be thinking that append is an in a form of insertion. Yes, it's a form of insertion, but append always uh, adds this item within the uh, curly braces, the parenthesis, to the very end of the list and not to a specific part. What insert does is you give insert a number, so an index number. I'll go with two, where yellow is. And then what you do is you give it a value. It could be any value. I'm going to give it an integer value. And it adds this value to that index of the list. Okay, so color.insert77. And if we print it now, you'll see that 77 is here. And what actually happens to the rest of the list is 77 becomes index item number two. And whatever is it was index item uh, index number two before gets pushed to the right to index number three. And all the items to the right of that index uh, number, the old index number two or whatever that index number of insert was, get pushed to the right one. And they all progressively go to the right one at a time. And that's how insert works. I can insert, if I, I can show you this by inserting 72 twice, or I can insert, I can insert instead of 77 twice, a uh, number like 909. And you'll see that 909 will end up here at index number two. Um, 77 will un end up here at index number three, and yellow will end up here at index number four. So I'll run that now, and I'll show you how that works. So run that, print, and here you are, 909 index 2 as stated, 77 is index 3 as stated, and yellow at index 4 as previously stated. Now, let's say I'm just sick of the colour red, and I just want to get rid of the colour red. I don't like red anymore, I've completely fallen out with it as a colour. No worries, I can just use this function here called remove. And I can remove the item that I've selected here from the list. Okay, run this and the item in these parentheses will be removed from the list. So if I print the color, you'll just see blue, red, 909, 77, yada, yada. And there we are, because we've removed red from the list, all the items to the right of the red have actually shifted to the left. And 909 has gone from index 2 to index 1. I know it's complicated, but try and bear with me. Because I'm sick of this list and its complication, what I'm going to do is delete everything inside of it. And the way that I do that is by using a function known as clear. So I write the word clear, and you see how I put a dot before the function name? You always, or you usually put a dot before, it depends on how the function works. And I put these curly braces here. And clear will absolutely get rid of every single item inside of the list color. Now, if I print color, it's just square brackets representing an empty list. Okay, so this is a list. It's it's acknowledging that it's a list, but there's nothing within the list. Okay, this is what an empty list looks like, just for just for reference. Yeah, just for reference, that's what an empty list 
look like. Okay. Now, let's imagine that I want to get rid of the last element in a list. Let's say in shopping list. I just don't care about salmon and I want to get rid of it. Well, I might put shopping list dot pop. And this dot pop will get rid of the last item in a list, salmon. And it also, as a return value, it shows me the item it's got rid of here. So if I print shopping list now, it should only have three items. In it. I can't remember what they are because we did modify it, but it shouldn't have the item salmon in it, and it should only have three items in it. There we are. Now then. Let's imagine that we want to get uh, the index number of an item in our list. We can do this um, solely by using the list name, the dot notation, and the function index with curly braces, parentheses as they're actually called. And inside these curly braces or parentheses, we put in the item whose index number we are looking for, and this function returns the index number. So I want the index number of peaches, which should be index number one, as it is the second item in the list, and it gives me number one. Next thing I'm going to do is count items in a list. I need a brand new list for this, and I'm going to call it num list two equals one 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 two two three four four. Okay. In this list, what I can do is find out how many ones in this list. So if I want to know how many ones are in this list, I use the list name numList dot count is the function. Count is the function. And this will return the amount of an specified item in a list. It's empty, so this should return an error. So it says it takes an argument, zero given, and I'll give it the argument of one, which is what I want to find. And it says that there are three ones. And if we count here, there are one, two, three ones. So that's indeed true. I can then uh, use the same same uh, function again, sorry, in order to find the how many number twos there are, how many number threes there are. There should only be one number three. There shouldn't be several. And so there's one number three. Couple more, couple more things now to show you. One more thing to show you is how to sort a list. So, for example, this number list here is completely unsorted. Let's just print that number list to make sure it's still got the same values. Yep, I haven't altered it. So, let's say that we wanted to sort this in numeric order. Well, this is possible. All we have to do is number list dot sort. That will sort it in ascending order i.e. the smallest number first and the largest number last. So if I print number list now, it should have the same values, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, and 2, but in a sorted order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There you are. Completely sorted list now. This permanently changes the list, by the way. And so does remove, append, insert, blah, blah, blah. Now... Let's say uh, I just don't like the order of my list and I want to completely reverse the order of the list. Okay, so let's use the shopping list. Let's print shopping list first of all. And you can see here the apples, peaches and PlayStation in that order. Now I, I just want to reverse the shopping list. Okay. So I'm going to put shopping list, which is the list name, dot reverse, and this function should reverse the list. And now if I print shopping list again, it should be in the order of PlayStation, Peaches, and Apples. And it is. Now there's one more 
list function I'll show you. And it's the last list function. Okay. And this, like I said, will be useful um, if you want to alter a list. But you don't. You want to keep an original copy, or you want to keep the original uh, original alter a copy of it. This is the exact uh, thing that you need. So let's say shopping list two equals shopping list dot copy and now here if we look at shopping list and then we look at shopping list two we'll see that they are exactly the same now they don't refer to the same list they actually refer to two separate lists with the same values okay I'll explain that more in uh, intermediate concepts when I get to that but for now just know that it's worth copying some lists sometimes um, I know this has been quite a lengthy one and you know if you look at the actual Python file it's a complete mess but don't worry about that I'm going to make a practice or maybe two practice videos on this just to get it more kind of uh, better understood by the people viewing this and also in my github I'm going to maybe clean this up comment it out a bit better so you can see what's happening the reason I'm not commenting these videos at the moment is essentially because I want you people to be able to do it yourselves and to remember to do it yourself so it would be good if you put added some comments to this uh, Python file uh, you could download it from a github but really you should be writing these values down or you know typing them out as I am speaking to you so that you get used to typing these values out and have kind of an intuitive understanding of uh, how Python works